way and to unpack this is the Treasurer General of uh, the ANC, Dr. Zwelim Kiza. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So five <coughs> days away, if you just saw our opening stories, all of them with the ANC, challenges, difficulties uh, across the country. Is it still going to happen at the weekend? Uh, the conference will happen, but uh, even if you were to postpone it by another year, there are tensions that get re become related to the fact that the conference is coming that have to be managed and we'll manage them right up till the conference door. All right, we'll unpack the preparations and so on and so forth. But I want to start with you as your job because you've been the Treasurer General and um, a couple of years ago you said um, we're not rich uh, but we're not broke. Uh, we're not going to turn super profits like mining houses. What is the state of the, S uh, the ANC's uh, finances? Well, it is still the same. Uh, we're not rich, we're not broke, uh, but uh, the ANC does not have, you know, uh, a, a commodity or something that it sells so that uh, it can make profits. So it's an organization that basically depends on the goodwill of its members and supporters. So we go out there and ask people to make contributions and then uh, people will make a contribution and we'll continue op o uh, operating on that basis. And it will not change because uh, the, the ANC has always lived on the basis of people have to make contribution for it to, uh, to, to go about its operations. Now, five years ago, uh, we sat on a stage in uh, Mangaungun Blufentein just after you'd been appointed. And uh, five years on, and it happens quickly, how would you look back at your tenure as TG? Um, how would you say you performed? Well, I think uh, we've performed uh, reasonably well as the Treasurer General uh, because mainly our role is that of uh, creating a platform from which the organization should be able to carry out <coughs> its programs uh, and that it must maintain its profile. It must be able to reach out to communities, our campaigns, to be able to talk to people, to talk to them about our policies, to talk to them about uh, what to expect uh, you know, out of our government and to talk to them about you know, why they should continue to have their confidence in the African National Congress. I think we've done reasonably well. I think the challenge is that uh, you know, once you're in government and the situations are as complex as what we have in South Africa, you're going to have things that we're going to do very well. There are going to be things we're going to be criticized. There are only going to be areas where you'll find things that you have done wrong. And so uh, you learn as you go. And uh, there's been a whole mixed bag, I think, uh, you know, if you were to look at the five years. But uh, the fact that the economic situation has been challenging, I think has really put a lot of stress and uh, criticism on us because people are feeling somehow uh, unhappy, largely because the economic situation has been a major challenge. Mm. Five years on from Treasury General, are you ready to be president of the ANC? <laughs> well, uh, we leave that to the delegates. Uh, after all, whatever number of uh, candidates you may have, uh, it's not so much up to them. It's more up to the delegates as to whether they will be able to vote for uh, that particular individual. At the end of the day, only one of us is going to be made uh, the president. And so I think we must say uh, the message from all of us is that we're willing to lead if elected so. Uh, we're also willing to be led by those who will be elected. We need to make sure that at the end of the day we emerge with a leadership collective that is fairly able to represent the sentiments and the spirit of the organization as well as also create the kind of image that will make people continue to have confidence in the African National Congress. Some people are saying that uh, you represent the compromise candidate, that perhaps you could unify the party in some way, which is almost a sad indictment on the state of the party that you seem to have these sides that are fighting each other and that, that the notion of a compromise candidate uh, speaks volumes to that. Yeah, the, the compromise candidate is more a media uh, story. <laughs> <coughs> In the ANC, we just nominate. Mm. So if you are nominated, the, uh, the branches will consider you. But uh, yes, indeed, the uh, message that we've been uh, raising in public is that of promoting unity. But at the end of the day, it's a responsibility of each and every one of the leaders of the ANC to collectively work together for the unity of the organization. After all, uh, you know, uh, because of the 
campaigns and the debates in the media, it sometimes looks like we're talking about people who are in different organizations. The truth of the matter is that all of those candidates are serving together. They actually meet every now and again as colleagues, as comrades, and they sit in one committee and there's no hostility. So I think what's important is to also try and manage the excitement that has uh, to come inevitably when we have to select leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, elections are like that. But uh, at the end of the day, we all have a responsibility. This ANC has to be united and the responsibility for that is that of all the members of the ANC and all its leaders. All right, let's uh, start unpacking some of these issues. And uh, I know that the ANC always talks about a collective leadership, so I'm going to be asking you the questions, but you're representing the leadership of the ANC. Let's start with this story that we showed just now, Cindy So Makaka. You've lost a future leader, and everybody says it's factional. How did the party get to a point where it starts killing its own? You know, to be honest, I really don't know. It's a very sad one, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, Cindy Somakaka is probably is just as young as my own children. Apart from him being a leader, it's a very sad one for us to lose young leaders like that. I know him very well, and uh, you know, he's one young fellow who has had lots of energy and was really a very good leader and very promising, as it were. Very outspoken, and he's a fellow who couldn't you say no to you if you wanted to raise the issue. That's how he was. However, we can't tell what has happened in the process, and we have to go deeply into this matter and whether uh, you know the statements that are being made I mean I see someone was saying it was about factions someone before had said it was about corruption whatever the reason there's not enough reasons for us to accept that there was a way there was a reason a basis on which he could have been killed there was no reason so we need to work together to firstly ensure that there's a strong team of police that go in there and those who are there need to be strengthened and those who are there we need to make sure we work with communities to help that uh, you know they must support them and we've co made that call but even inside the organization we need to go in again the leadership in the province has gone in there to separate out on political matters to see whether there's anything that can be found that should need to be solved to actually stop this kind of problem. As, as, as to what it is, we, we have to find uh, out when the As uh, national police. leadership, how can you say we don't know what it is? Because it is a party problem, um, and nobody gets killed and nobody knows what's going on. 22 people have died, I believe, since about 2011, which makes it the worst area, KwaZulu-Natal. It's happening in other parts of the country. But how is it that you can't know? It's either you are failing in leading by not being able to get people on the ground to tell you these stories. Yes, it depends how the crime has been committed. It also depends on the level of investigation. It also depends on the environment around which the police are investigating. But we, we must say it has to, we have to find out what happened. At the end of the day, yes, it is not a good image for us when you see those kinds of things happening. But at the same time, I think it's important to say it's at the end of it is a criminal matter. Mm -hmm. The police have to investigate, and there shouldn't be anything political about anyone who gets found, even if there might be, uh, you know, members of an organization even if there might be leaders but once it comes to killing it's a crime and it's criminal it has to be exposed as the, such the hand on heart at Lutuli house you have no idea who's doing this killing no, th look, it has to be with the police. The police have to give us. I think we need to be very careful that, uh, you know, political parties don't have the same capacity to investigate as the police have. And it's important for us to always give the police the support and the independence to be able to investigate. And, of course, we have to go in there and ensure that there's enough support for the police and for the community to be able to come out and give us information. But we have to make sure that the police are the ones that are investigating and it has to be dealt with. And the message for, for us from the leadership, the message is to say we condemn this and we say no, none of our members must be found to be responsible for it and that will act if we find it, but also they must go all the way out to help the police to investigate and give all the information that is necessary. You agree that the party is not unified? In 2011, when I first spoke to President Zuma, he said, I asked him directly, is your party unified? And he said, yes, very confidently. And yet, at that stage, as far back as then, people were already saying this party is in trouble. 2017, we see it in the killing fields, and we see it in the, the manner in which the campaigns have been happening. Maybe not the leaders, but certainly the supporters have been quite divisive in the way that, that they're uh, behaving. So the question now becomes, whose fault is it that the party has become so divided? I'm looking to you as the leadership. You needed to manage this. Have you failed? 
I wouldn't say we have failed, but I think we must all take responsibility for what happens in the organization. If the, uh, at the moment we have uh, uh, you know, divisions that uh, are showing in public, but we believe that those divisions have to be managed. Some of them arise from the you know, a way we manage issues. Some of them uh, you know, are not as fundamental and ideological as to really call them fundamental differences. So these are issues of how we're managing issues, and so I think they can still be managed and contained. But yes, if you look back over the years, uh, you know, there are tendencies that we have identified that are creeping into the organization that we need to uproot and we have uh, said so. And all that we need to be able to do is to ensure that uh, as the conference comes, it addresses all those issues and we uproot the causes of the divisions. But the ANC is not, has not al always been a divided organization, but the differences of opinion mm -hmm. are allowed in the organization. So it's a matter of the, the degrees of, of the, of the uh, div uh, differences. Right now, I think we, we're having, you know, bring back party discipline and also deal with the issues that fundamentally create uh, you know, differences among the members that are not well, uh, well uh, settled within the party. Well, you've talked about court cases, and I suppose for many they might be wondering, how is it possible that you can be confident this conference can go ahead? The Free State is facing a court bid on Thursday to prevent all of their delegates arriving at conference. How do you overcome this, and are you happy that you've done enough that the will of the people will be uh, seen uh, uh, at conference? Well, uh, in the last conference in 2012, <coughs> we had some court cases already at that time. Even Free State was involved. Sometimes when you get that uh, situation, you have to find ways to mitigate against it. And so certain decisions were to be taken by conference to avoid the issue of the court case spilling into the conference and it was successfully managed. Now, this time around, <coughs> we're dealing with the issues ahead of conference. I think what you need to call for is calmness amongst all the leaders, is also to be able to say, let's seek uh, a solutions to the genuine problem that create the disputes and then deal with them. But also, let's find a way of how can members find each other to be able to resolve these issues such that when we go to conference, we don't have to you know, have uh, a, a standoffs, we don't have to have the, uh, you know, the um, court issues that are arising. If you go to conference, uh, there will always be enough mistakes, there are enough uh, issues, there are enough disagreements. It doesn't mean that the absence of those is what we'll need before you get to the conference. It's a management of those issues. As long as we understand each other, that we're trying to build the organization and we must find a way to resolve the problem, listen to each other. What is it that makes others to make a dispute and how are the processes you know, uh, you know, followed to resolve those disputes? And if those are not satisfactorily done, then we need to attend to that. If they have been done, we need to also persuade each other to say, look, this is the, how far we've taken the issue. So when we go to the conference, there can be any kind of reason why people might want the conference not to proceed. But we need to persuade each other because it's all in our interest to go into a successful conference, mm -hmm. orderly conference, and a conference that would unite all the members of the ANC. So we have a situation <coughs> where um, Pumalanga says there's a unity delegates that are coming through. We have a situation where uh, Premier S. Makashule says that Sir um, Ramaphosa and Kosas and Lamini Zuma must sit down together and come up with a common position before conference. All of these things speak to threats. H how do you react to Ace Makashule in saying that these people must come together before the conference and come up with a common position? No, I agree with him. I think that everybody must engage, we must talk <coughs> to each other, and all the candidates and all those who support them, all the lobby groups, all the structures, we must talk, because the only way you're going to find a solution is when we talk. At the end of the day, it's not so much, you know, uh, the you know, wafa wafa contest that is important. What is important for us is to be able to get something that says this is the kind of leadership that we can work together with, that we can lead with. It must be fairly inclusive of all so that it can unite all the different, uh, you know, uh, strands of the organization. If you get that leadership, you can discuss, sit down, and actually reduce the tension so that even if there's a contest, it's minimized so that everybody understands it's all about democracy, it's not about. It's not about, uh, you know, one group must destroy the other and so on. It's not a place of war. That conference is for building the ANC. It's not about people going there as enemies. It's about people going there as comrades to build, unite, and make sure that the o ANC emerges with a much better image. Sometimes the excitement of election needs to be managed better, and therefore in this case, I think that uh, it's still possible. Are you happy with...
<coughs> the process of making sure that the persons who are meant to be at conference will be there and that the delegates themselves will represent their provinces and that the integrity is not compromised by things like bribes. Firstly, uh, you know, the bulk of the branches have gone through without a lot of problems, but there are instances where there could either have been mistakes or people would have started mischief, and we don't deny that those things will happen. And when they happen, the members who are affected must raise them, and must raise them persistently and consistently so that they are resolved, and we must continue to raise the, to deal with them until everybody is resolved. Now, the issue of bribes and so on, you can hear those kinds of allegations. What my real uh, source of hope is the fact that if you talk talk to the members of the ANC, ordinary members and general delegates, you will find that their desire to emerge with a strong African National Congress, with a united party that is renewed, that solves a lot of its problems, is much stronger than any amount of money you can give anyone. So if somebody gives somebody money, well, that's probably their own issue. But if you look at the bulk and the average member of the African National Congress, their main interest is the passion they have for the ANC, and they want to get it solved. You know, you, you will not find a majority of people on the ANC who will say, give us the money, we can live with leaders that are not inspiring, that you don't like, you will not have that. So I think that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I think we, we must expose it, though, if we find it, and deal with those who are involved. Case of <coughs> we go back there again. PEC had a meeting. Your reflections on uh, what's come out of that? Um, uh, well, um, you're talking about the yes. provincial Can general. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, look, the pr pr provincial general meeting was about discussion of documents. It was about receiving the branch nominations. It was about, uh, you know, robust engagement. Uh, I would say it was just one of those meetings uh, that uh, was happening all over the country. So I don't have anything new that I think w would have come from that meeting other than the fact that all those members would have really wanted to express their views in terms of what impact they would like Wazulu Natal to make in there. I think what's important for Wazulu Natal is to say we recognize that there are certain divisions there and that those tensions we need to find ways to manage them so that when they get into conference they are not a factor but rather the preferences the different preferences are understood and that the different uh, you know uh, views on whatever issues don't cause a conflict that can spill into the conference these court cases you know some people might measure it in terms of um, time that days spent in court and the cost of litigation but, you know, as someone who's had time, some often opportunities to be in court and be a litigant, it is emotionally draining. And I'm just wondering what all of these court cases and these court challenges are doing for the spirit of the party. Look, I think uh, it's not the best uh, for us. The, the major issue about the uh, court cases is the exhaustion spiritually, the emotional drainage that comes through from a situation where com uh, comrades <coughs> are facing at one another across the court floor. It's actually not the best thing that should happen to an organization because it tends to you know, affect the way people relate and going forward, even their faith and their you know, respect for each other gets eroded. But I think that we need to uh, tighten up on our, <coughs> on our mechanisms so that we can resolve these issues uh, without them spilling into court. In the conference, there's a proposal that's going in to help us to do mediation of some sort so that we do not need the court to deal with issues because in some instances people have to they feel that they, they were not properly attended to and so that's why they go, they, they go to court. Is this again leadership because if you were doing your job <coughs> as the leadership of the party at national level your job is to step in and resolve these issues before yes. they get to court. Well, um, I think it's a bit more complex. Yes, the leadership should help step in, and that can make a lot of difference. But also, you need to uh, understand that the uh, evolving times mean that there are certain things that you thought you could take for granted, but with time they become inadequate for purposes of resolving your problem, and you have to keep reviewing your rules and tightening them up. And the conference gives us such an opportunity as well. All right, so um, the choosing of a leader at the uh, at ANC level, the threshold is much lower because you only need to convince a million or so card-carrying members. By the time you get to elections, the threshold is much, much higher. The convincing is much more uh, greater. Do you need to revise the process of choosing an ANC leader to match the hopes and aspirations 
of the public in general, even those that don't support the ANC? Look, there's room for improvement. Uh, I think we have uh, identified some flaws in the way we go about with our selection process. So I think we need to reflect on what else can be done so that uh, you can get the best outcomes and less, di uh, less disputes on the process. But there are a few things which we have to uh, say. One, uh, it's not possible to ever get a general agreement. It's very rare that you get an agreement where everybody agrees on one leader. Secondly, um, Ordinarily, the ANC branches need to be in touch and working so closely with communities that by and large they should be reflecting the sentiments of society so that even the selection of leadership should generally address the expectations of society. That's an issue that we must address ourselves and go into so that, uh, you know, we have spoken, for example, about situations where if, if leadership creates a, keeps a small branch that is 100 people when we have got 5,000 voters, it obviously becomes a bit of a challenge. So you need to address that imbalance. By and large, uh, we, we believe that the fact that you will have the uh, you know, representation from the branches all over the country should give, give you a fair sense of the uh, appeal of the leadership. There may obviously be differences because you can never have everyone. You know, <laughs> So now, recently, you, s you spent time with the president uh, as uh, presidential uh, candidates. Did you discuss some of these issues with the president, or was it more him expressing his wishes to you? No, we all discussed a number of issues. Uh, amongst the issues that we're discussing basically was what else, what do we need to do to create an environment where everyone out there should be able to know that amongst those who are uh, nominated as candidates, <coughs> there is no enmity amongst them. That uh, you know, there is no candidate that must you, you must die for. It's a candidate that's a member of the ANC, and everyone else uh, uh, has to accept that we are all colleagues, we are comrades. Mm -hmm. We have to work together. We have sent the message out there to say any of us is just as good a leader as uh, you know uh, can be found. So we see you sitting together, and you're smiling and often dancing together. But you, the people that are following you and and supporting you are not behaving the same way. Yes. You see it in the songs and in the gestures. So clearly the, it's not filtering down to your supporters. Well, it has to filter because we've said a lot of things in that meeting and the message we sent that no divisive song must be sung, no uh, you know, partisan t-shirts of uh, one candidate or another must be brought into the conference, that uh, you know, no signs, no gestures, no booing, no heckling, mm -hmm. no undue pressure and intimidation uh, will ever be allowed. And so we expect that the conference floor should be fairly disciplined when it comes to that particular matter. As the governing party, um, you oversee governance in this country. Has state capture happened under your watch? Well, this issue of state capture is a new issue. Uh, it has been raised. There's a whole lot of debate about it. And there are very worrying things around it. And uh, what we have agreed is that we need to ensure that there's a commission of inquiry that exposes everything. So all those emails, all those allegations, all those names of individuals, all those companies must go in through that process. Then South Africans know exactly what we're talking about in this case. But imagine if this state capture thing didn't happen in, 20, in 2017. Nothing says it wouldn't have happened in 2030. So I think we must learn from what we're going to find out of this uh, you know, investigation and make sure that in future we can prevent anything like what is happening now. So, you know, I think there's a lot of evidence that something has happened. Sure. And I guess people might <coughs> be saying that you have an NEC, powerful body, that should do its job and prevent poor governance because you deploy the people that are in government. Has the NEC failed to prevent things like state capture? Well, uh, we, we, when the first meta arose, and I think you might just recall that the name, this word, state capture, actually started coming from the ANC and its alliance partners. And we started by saying that this thing must be investigated, and we thought the Secretary General could actually deal with it. As soon as we realized it was not possible, we accepted that another body, such as the 
public protector could follow that matter up. And we also have accepted that there's a need for a commission. So I think that uh, it's an issue that arose in the context, and therefore we're f doing everything to make sure that it is uncovered properly and that we investigate it. But uh, the issue of uh, monitoring on governance is something that we have to do more tightly. There was a, a, a new uh, prog uh, department of monitoring and evaluation that was supposed to help us there. So when we sit in the conference, we must also look at what have been the weaknesses, how do we tighten up so that government must be seen to be operating efficiently, and whatever the challenges are, we must be able to tighten up. As president, how would you stop administrative blunders that caused the life acid domain issue, for example? That one had loss of life, but in other areas, we're having loss of money, income, resources, finances. Well, that's a very wide topic. Uh, uh, on the issue of life as many, it's a very sad one. And I think all of us uh, looking at it, we must say that it's really something that we regret that it would have happened the way it would have happened. And that uh, it must be a lesson to all of us to take care of, uh, you know, the uh, management of the service society to don't get that kind of problem. Nevertheless, the commission is going through that, and so hopefully th there's going to be better recommendations of how we can prevent that. The rest of the other issues, if we deal with the issues of inefficiencies, we're dealing with issues of, of government, I think there we need to tighten up on the mechanism inside government to deal with that, and even in society in general, that there, there should be direct investigation, there should be swift action, there should be, you know, even within the party, there should be an indication of early action when there is some uh, misconduct has happened and I think you know, to show action for those instances where people have uh, done something wrong I think we need to really make sure that part is strong. All right finally what's your big wish for the ANC coming out of this conference a lot of people are holding their breath that we'll see another cope another change party another EFF as a result of this conference my wish is a strong United African National Congress which gets out of conference and inspires the people of South Africa to make them realize that the program to transform our country is safe in the hands of the African National Congress Treasurer General Zorim Kiza, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us and uh, giving us your insights ahead of your all-important conference this weekend. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much. All right, so now tomorrow our guest will be the ANC Deputy Secretary General, Jesse Duarte. We'll be looking at issues uh, exclusively and uh, the racial tension that's uh, uh, rearing its ugly head. That's uh, Jesse Duarte at this time tomorrow as we continue this series of meeting the top six. Uh, perhaps the last time that there are the top six, who knows, one of them might even be president. All of that tomorrow. If we take a break in the meantime.